Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the FSX404 channel. Today we're going to do an approach into Paro Airport in Bhutan. The location of Paro Airport makes Paro one of the most extreme airports in the world. Located at an elevation of over 7,300 feet, it's surrounded by mountains on all sides. The Paro runway has a mountain side right next to it, creating dangerous turbulence and wind shear, just as the airplane is touching down. Having said all this, the most dangerous part of landing at Paro is actually the design of the approach itself. The approach at Paro is divided into two parts, instrument part and the visual part. The first part of the approach is the instrument part. It's a basic VOR approach. We'll be flying to the Paro VOR from the south. We will reach Paro VOR at an altitude of 13,500 feet. As we overfly the VOR, we will turn to a radial of 328 from the VOR. A mile from the VOR, at the point D1, we can start the descent from 13,500 feet down to 12,500. We cannot descend below 12,500 feet at any point unless we have the airport in sight. If we don't see the airport by point D5, 5 miles from the VOR, we have to execute a missed approach. You guys can take a look at the missed approach on your own. Now, once we have the airport in sight, we will switch from the instrument approach to a visual approach. This is where the approach into Paro becomes crazy. Once we have the airport in sight, we can descend down to 11,500 feet. We will maintain 11,500 feet until we start our turn onto the final. As we are descending to 11,500 feet, we will head straight for the airport. We should overfly the airport at 11,500 feet, about 4,000 feet above the airport. Once over the airport, we will turn our plane to head directly for the side of this mountain. As we are flying towards the side of the mountain in front of us, there will be another side of the mountain on our left side. When we have cleared the mountain on our left side, we will make a left turn and fly the plane straight for this gorge. As we are flying towards the gorge, we will be skimming the side of the mountain on our left. We are still going to be at 11,500 feet, and this is where the approach gets really crazy. Once we have gotten close enough to the gorge, and we want to be very disciplined here, we don't want to turn too early, we're going to make a 240 degree turn onto our final. Now let's talk about this turn for a while. We will have less than 2 miles of space to do this 240 degree turn in an airliner. We'll have to do a precise descent during this turn from 11,500 feet down to around 9,500 feet by the time we roll out on final. We cannot be any higher than 10,000 feet or below 9,000 feet by the time we roll out onto the final. Any higher than 10,000 feet and we'll have a hard time getting the plane down onto the runway safely. Any lower than 9,000 feet and we run a risk of running into terrain. In addition to having to do a precise descent, the turn has to be done at a speed of 135 knots, plus or minus 5 knots. So we have to do this whole turn between 130 to 140 knots. The turn itself has to be done at a bank of 30 to 40 degrees. So now you guys can see how big of a problem this is. We're flying in a confined space at an exact speed doing a precise descent while we're banking an airliner at 30 to 40 degrees of bank. Now I'll have some tips for you guys on how to do this turn during the flight part of this video but let's continue with briefing this approach. As we are rolling out onto the final approach at 9500 feet we still have to do the crazy S turn final approach. We'll follow the river skirting the mountain on our left side until we reach the edge of the mountain where we will do another 30 degree bank turn to the right flying just to the left side of the edge of this mountain. At this time we will have a visual on the runway and we will line up with the runway appropriately. This last turn doesn't have to be a crazy turn, just enough to line us up. So you don't have to do any crazy stunts, just line yourself up and you'll be fine. We will do this approach in a iFly Boeing 737-700. We'll pick up this flight just a little south of the Paro VOR descending down to 13,500 feet. So let's get on the plane and let's fly this approach. So alright guys, we're inside the airplane right now. We are flying towards the Paro VOR. We are descending down to 13,500 feet and we are flying by our instruments. Now obviously the weather really has to be VFR for airplanes to land in this airport. And at this point we can actually kind of see the airport over there in the distance. We are right over the VOR. We're turning uh, to a radial 328. And since we see the airport, we can start our descent to 11,500 feet at this point. 
Also, at this point, we are going visual. So we're flying visually from this point. We're not going to use our instruments anymore. We're just going to use our eyes, and we're going to use the train around us. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to fly straight for the airport. I know there's a discussion between uh, Airbus and Boeing and what's better, who likes what better. That doesn't matter, that's just a personal preference. One thing we have to remember about Airbus is, is that the Airbus, uh, especially for this approach, has to be in a landing configuration for us to be able to do those 30 to 40 degree bank turns uh, that come later on. So if you're using an Airbus to do this approach, make sure you put it in a landing configuration. That way you can go over 30 degrees of bank if you need to. So as we're getting over the airport, just a little bit to off of our center to the right, we can see the edge of the mountain we're going to head for in just a little bit. We're at 11,500 feet, we're going to level off here and we're going to maintain 11,500 feet until we begin that uh, long turn of uh, 240 degrees onto the final. As we're getting over the airport, let's turn our plane and head straight for the edge of that mountain. So at this point, we're going to maintain this altitude and we're just going to head straight for that mountain. Straight for that edge of the mountain. You can see how the shadow is splitting the half of the mountain, the side of the mountain. Now off to the left side, there's going to be this mountain that we kind of have to pass and we're going to follow this mountain on our left. As soon as we pass it, we're going to turn right into it and we're going to skirt it, we're going to follow the edge of it right next to it, right into the gorge. Okay, so we're passing it right now. Let's do about a 30 degree turn. At this point, we're going to start have to uh, using a little more aggressive maneuvers. Otherwise, we'll end up flying right into the mountain. And another thing to talk about over here is because this is a mountainous area, there is really no horizon. We're going to get an optical illusion to where our bank is. So we really have to kind of glance at our uh, attitude indicator to make sure our bank and pitch is exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so now we've just rolled out and we're headed straight for that gorge. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do that steep 30 to 40 degree bank turn to our right. Now, if you're flying an Airbus, this is where you're going to put your landing gear down. You're going to need the plane in the landing configuration for this upcoming turn. If you're flying a Boeing, we're going to put our landing gear down once we roll out at the end of this turn. What we have to remember about steep turns is that the more we bank, the less vertical lift the airplane has and the faster it's going to drop. So for us to have a normal rate of descent of about 1,500 feet, our nose is going to have to be a little bit up. And that's one trick we're going to use for this turn. Uh, we're going to make sure we're at 135 knots. And just before we begin this turn, we're going to lift our nose a little bit. And we're going to roll our plane right into a 30 to 40 degree bank turn. There's two things we have to pay attention to during this turn. Our airspeed cannot go above 140 knots. The second thing we have to pay attention to is our rate of descent. During these steeper turns, our rate of descent can be excessive. We have to make sure we don't exceed our rate of descent. One thing to remember about these steeper turns is that once we're in a turn, it's very hard to lift the nose up. We cannot just apply back pressure and uh, try to lift the nose that way. We would actually have to roll it out for a little bit, lift the nose up, and roll it right back in. So if we're losing too much altitude, roll out the plane real quick, lift the nose up, and roll it right back in. Don't let the whole maneuver last more than two or three seconds. Roll out, nose up, roll right back in, that quick. Otherwise, we're not gonna make that turn. There we go, uh, we're almost at the end of this turn. There's the river, we're right over the river. We're gonna roll out 9,500 feet. We're gonna follow that river, and we're gonna keep this mountain, this edge of the mountain, just to our left side. And as soon as we reach the uh, edge of the mountain right there, we're going to do a sharp 30 degree bank turn again to our right to line up with the runway. At this point, we have visual of our runway, but we're going to be patient for just a little bit right until we reach this edge. As soon as we reach this edge, let's do a 30 degree bank turn. We have to maintain our airspeed. Our airspeed cannot get excessive. 1, uh, you're going to see a bunch of houses down there. We're actually going to turn for those houses. In the real life, that's a temple, and they do use that as a marker. 
and we're gonna fly just to the left of this other edge of the mountain and we're gonna turn on final when it's appropriate one thing we have to remember is that this last turn on final it doesn't have to be crazy just keep it nice and smooth just enough to get you lined up with the runway as far as the rest it's just another landing there it is, center line, reverse thrusters, and let the plane slow down on its own. Make sure we stay on the center line, and that is as uh, easy as it gets. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Think rate. Two hundred. Two hundred. Think rate. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. 30, 20, 10.